And with me right now is Mr. Marshall Masters. How's it going, my friend? It's going good, Michael. So good to be back with you. I'm so glad well, you're here. Have such a good time. I'm so glad you're here, Marshall. You know, it's been a long, long time. Well, I've been working on a project, and it's what I call my Planet X FAQs. And these are videos that I'm doing, and they're about eight to ten minutes each on on average. And what I wanted to do was I, I saw a need for this because I have people coming on my Telegram channel, which is uh, Yowza.com and then Yowza Awareness and what Yowza Observation. And they were asking questions I've answered time and again before, but people are new. They're coming into it. And so I had the people that are new coming into it and I needed to address their needs. But there was something else I wanted to do because I am seeing how they're sponging so much information off the internet and they're perverting it. So it's perversion and sponging and they're they're destroying the narrative. So people, what they want to be able to do is when this gets going full steam, they're going to go, whoa, we're just as surprised as you are. Who could have imagined it coming? They've known for half a century. These bastards have known for half a century. They knew since 1983 in IRAS, and it was completely confirmed. And actually, you could go back 10 years prior to that and uh, with the pioneer probes, and they had a good idea that there was something out there, which is the reason why they did the IRAS probe in 1983. And IRAS is, it was a sky survey. And the interesting thing is if you're doing Google Sky, that sky survey is used extensively in Google Sky and Google Earth. And all you have to do, you can look if you're on Google and you can go and you can find in the corner and it will say IRAS Sky Survey 1983. And so people think when they're on Google Earth and they're using the sky, Google Sky, that they're seeing the universe just as it is today, as though Google has a gazillion billion webcams floating in space. Well, it doesn't have a gazillion billion webcams. <laughs> what you're seeing is what the world was what the sky was looking like at the time they were starting to image Nemesis, which is a brown dwarf star. So I wanted people to be able to have a sense of history on this thing because I see them destroying the history of it. And that is the main reason for doing the FAQs personally for me. That Boy. and to help the newbies. The first Right now, they're seven up. By the time I'm finished, it'll be about 18 to 20 videos. And uh, the first four really are for the newbies. Those right. are the newbie questions. What is Planet X? All right. And, uh, you know, uh, for those of us who've been in for a while, yeah, you know, we go, my gosh, I forgot to ask that question. Right. Because we know about it. Um, the thing here is that once you get into number five, which is the pole shift, really pulls together all of the stuff that's presented in the first four for the newbies so that when they get into the pole shift, it goes click and they can see it. And then I getting into a lot of other issues, particularly with the observatories, astronomers, the science history, you know, not with going back and uh, doing the woo-woo dance, all right? Which and is always somebody, fun at times. It, it's fun, but what I wanted to give people was the real substance, right. the real stuff. And, uh, and by the way, Marshall, so, I, I hate to interrupt you, but yeah. I, I didn't want this to go unanswered here, but I, I did want your opinion on one individual here by the name of Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know, he's been making the rounds again and stating that Planet X does not exist. Well, that reminds me of an old uh, joke from years ago. 
Nietzsche said God is dead. Right. God said Nietzsche is dead. <laughs> um, Neil Tyson is, he's saying Planet X is dead because he's pushing Planet Nine. Planet Nine is a PSYOP. That is the second video in my FAQ series. What is Planet Nine? Planet Nine's a hoax. All right. People don't understand that because uh, they they don't know the history of how the whole Planet Nine thing came to be. So if this guy is saying it doesn't exist and this, that. Right. Well, I would tell him as an astronomer, a very simple fact of astronomy. The failure to observe an object proves only one thing. You have failed to observe the object. That's it. Bingo. And it's not like, well, we didn't see it, so it doesn't exist. You know, it's got that we invented it here thing going. That's right. Uh, so, and this is exactly like Tyson doing this. And he's out there, you know, he got his talking points. They told him what to do. Oh, yes. And he's out there doing it because he wants to keep his job. That and he's a government shill, of course. Yeah, he's a shill. And uh, the problem is, is that we're going to have these shills. We're going to have these people doing this stuff. It's out there. We are, we're tracking it. We have observation videos on my Telegram channel. If you go to yowusa.com, just look on the left-hand side and you'll see the links to my uh, social media. I'm on Telegram, and I'm also on X and Google Groups. Very nice. Yes, go to yowusa.com. That's y-o-w-u-s-a.com, and you will see it on the left-hand side of your screen. That's right. And then just click in from there and uh, get in there. You'll see <clears throat> I have basically for article announcements and posts, uh, X, Telegram, Google Groups, also, my um, Planet X FAQ videos are on my Odyssey channel. And I rather like Odyssey. It's a, it's a small but really good little service, and it's fair. You don't get into it with all these algorithms and AI stuff that'll bury you. Right. You know, they just... It, it's really strange. I, I put it up on... Those the X platform, and I put it up on Odyssey. If you're comparing size-wise, it's like comparing a watermelon to a raisin, right? Right. I agree. And by the way, um, I, I saw the suppression happening way back in, I would say, 2011 is when it really was rampant in terms of websites being sort of scrubbed, very much like yours was at one time. Yeah. And... They really, they were playing around with us then. It was 2013 when they dropped the hammer on me hard and started coming after me because I put up a video at that time, Planet X 101, kind of doing the same thing as the FAQs, but it was a like one hour show. I see. And this is, these are updated, some of the same content, but these are much more updated and because it's, I, I set it up so that you're like eight to 10 minutes each. So you don't have to sit there and block out an hour of your time. You can just come in and watch something, answer a question. You know it's there. You can always go back and you got an eight to 10 minute answer to your question. And I think that is really going to help the people. But uh, if you go on YouTube, on YouTube, my Yao Books channel, it was, uh, last time I checked, it was, I think, at 19 million views to date. And the only people that know about it on YouTube are the ones that actually have a direct link. And you're not going to find me in the second largest search engine in the world, right. which is YouTube. And on the first largest, you you know, if you find anything on Google, or any of the others, it's really old stuff. That's right. They yeah. They don't do any of my new stuff. So I really, 
I don't have an outreach ability. Uh, my content when I was uh, back before 2012, oh my gosh, uh, I was just doing amazing traffic and getting yeah. a huge amount of views. You were I crushing it. Yeah, I was I was crushing it, and then they crushed me. That, that's what happens. And again, when you look for Marshall Masters on YouTube, you're going to come across um, some very unknown rappers, by the way. Yeah, yeah. They just totally buried me. It's just evil mean. And, they're, and now what they're doing is, I can't believe it. They're coming back, and they are hitting me for community rule violations oh my. on videos that are 12 years old. <laughs> wow, they're, they're really trying to get rid of you, and they've done that to uh, my channel on YouTube uh, numerous times, by the way, and you're, you're in good company. The algorithm does not like this program either. You, this program doesn't get organic views on YouTube. I have to push that link out there in order for, that, for the channel to get any views. Right. So I, I know what you're going through. It's very frustrating, especially when you know the repulsive sort of content that YouTube likes to promote. Yeah. It's yeah. a shame. And even when Trump was in office, I was being suppressed. Um, you know, I mean, because YouTube is pure deep state. That's it. You know, it's a CIA front. Unfortunately, it, I believe it is. I believe um, the government has their hand in about everything that we consume, unfortunately, and they control who gets uh, all the views, in my belief. Yeah, and they drive traffic to you or... Away from you. They Away from you or they just make you disappear like, you know, that was it. <laughs> you were never right. born. And... Uh, I, they do it to me. They've done it to so many other people. This hassle is going on. I'm really hoping that next year, I think Trump is going to win the election. You know, God willing, and the damn don't fail. But uh, I think after Trump comes in, they're going to... He, they're going to get after this stuff and start cleaning up all of this suppression all of this, you know, being accused of right. disinformation. They're like, great. The, for, the, the, the guy who's doing the disinformation is one making the accusation. And um, I think it'll change. It'll turn around. I'm hoping it will. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing the FAQ. I haven't done videos for the longest time. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, and because I just... I would bring out the videos and they crush your traffic. I mean, they crush it. It used to be I could put up a video and get thousands of views that day. Right. I remember going yeah. back to uh, 2017, we would get uh, 20,000 views easy, fast. Yeah. Now it takes a year to get a thousand views. Basically, yeah. And the thing of it is, is that um, with a... The only way to bypass it is to do embeds. And so yeah, pretty much, uh, you know, you get the code embedded on your site. You can drive traffic to your site. And uh, but we have it all the time. Amazon has, you know, done this stuff. I, you know, I'm really glad that I've been able to stay in in the game yes. in, in Amazon, uh, uh, you know, because, you know, they could easily just get rid of all your books just like that. Yeah, it's well, I mean, if they're going to get rid of the books, they have to be able to do it in a way that is legitimate. Otherwise, because you're you're in business. OK, so it's one thing to go out and crush your account. It's a free account. You're not financially injured. But if you're on a service where this is part and parcel of your business and they do it to you and you're financially injured, then that's a different thing. And so uh, I was, this was two years ago and they were really trying to trash one of my titles. And 
I prayed on it. I didn't, you know, I I was talking I, uh, to a guy. You know, the funny thing is the people that do these kind of things, they're not the front-facing folks that you would imagine, all right, the corporate policy and all of that. The folks that are doing this stuff, they're in the back room. They're in the back office. You don't see them. And they're manipulating the system with all kinds of stuff to hit you. And what they were doing was they were they came back to me on this title and they said, well, you have to prove ownership that you have copyright license to, to publish the book on something that's I've been selling on Amazon for over 12 years already. Well, I mean, I was just like, this is stupid. So I sent them a copy of the Library of Cong Congress uh, copyright grant, clearly proving that I have the right to publish the material. And whoever was doing this hmm. on the back end in Amazon was persistent in saying, you have to prove this, you have to prove this, you have to prove this. And I called and talked to one of the support people. And, you know, there you can find somebody usually who's who's a pretty good guy. You can find good guys, all right? And I found a good guy, and I told him what was going on. And I said, I don't know. Do I just ignore this? And hmm. he said, no, sir, you don't ignore it. If you ignore it, it'll be a default decision. Ah. And they will take you out. And he knew exactly what was happening. He knew it was, you know, it's it's one of these um, uh, one of these woke assholes. I have to agree with you. This must be a common practice then. And so he's probably has seen this. Thing. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I followed his advice and I just kept responding. He said, as long as you keep responding, they can't close out the ticket. It's an undecided issue as long as you are responding. And so we went through another, you know, like probably two or three rounds of wow. this. And and I'm figuring, well, I'm just, you know, this guy is persistent. He's waiting for me to trip up and fail. And then he's going to nail my butt. And I was stumped. I, I didn't know what to do. This would, you know, it, it could really hurt me. And I prayed on it and I prayed you know, and asked God. And the message I got from God, and God said, here, this is what you say. And I wrote it down verbatim. As a matter of fact, I memorized it verbatim. And what I wrote back to Amazon was, it was exactly the, the what God told me to say. I said, there is no defense against a woke corporation bent on doing harm. 30 minutes later, the bullshit was done. The title was released, and I won. Well, I'm glad you won, but man, what a hassle. It was, but imagine, you know, I didn't know what to do. I was, I didn't know what to do, know what to say, other than you got to keep slogging with this guy. And I prayed on it, and God told me what to do. I did exactly what God told me to do. Bingo. Game over. It was 30 minutes later, I'm back in business. You're good, yeah. And so it goes this way. Um, like when we saw what happened with President Trump in oh my. Pennsylvania, I was like, oh, my God. And everybody is right. I mean, we literally were like one inch away from a kinetic, uh, you know, uh, if if he had been killed in that. Man, uh, the, we would have wound up in a kinetic civil war. You really think there would have been a civil war if someone, if he actually did get assassinated? Do you think there would have been, you know, like factions of people fighting it out? Well, a lot of folks think that's 
what would have happened. I'm not sure that it would. I see the Patriots understand if we get baited into something like this, they're going to win, we're going to lose. And so what I see Patriots doing that I really appreciate is there's no better way to say it. They're turning the other cheek. I They're see, not yeah. ignoring it, but they know when folks know when to turn the other cheek. And this is frustrating for the deep state because they want that emotional rage because they can manipulate that, you know, in many different ways. So we are definitely, uh, you know, it's a battle of good versus evil and creator has got our back and you know it's tough but i really I, i'm hopeful for the future i see it going good and for me this is extremely important because these political this this political situation that we're in right now is going to be huge in determining how many people are going to survive the flyby? If the cabal is able to defeat the White Hats, and this game is, you know, I mean, it's like, yeah, they keep saying the White Hats are in control. No, the White Hats have the advantage. If the White Hats were in control, it would have been over by now. I would have All to right. imagine, yes. And by the way, Marshall, just to uh, just to backtrack for a second here, in regards to uh, Trump, you know, I'm not an overly uh, religious uh, individual, truth be told. However, that was nothing short of a miracle what we witnessed, uh, Marshall. That was pretty wild. You know, it's how God works. And it's amazing. Uh, evil, the thing about the difference between good and evil, good creates, evil calculates. And they're always calculating. They're shrewd. They're not wise, but they're very shrewd, shrewd and they got smir street smarts. And But Creator, he lets them go off and do this stuff, and then it takes something very little to completely flip it around against them. And here's a... There was a German battleship that the British wanted to destroy. And the name doesn't come directly to me right now. It was up in uh, a fjord, I think up in Norway. And <clears throat> the British wanted to sink this thing in the worst way possible. And they sent uh, numerous attacks. A lot of aviators uh, lost their lives trying to bomb this thing and sink it. And oh, they just must have, you know, like a ha made a dozen attempts. And it was finally down to, because of the weather and the season, they had one last shot. And so they had a squadron of uh, Lancaster bombers, four-engine bombers. And the Lancasters had to be stripped down because this was a long haul. They had to go from Scotland and around Finland and Norway into Russia, and then so that they could come back from the Russia side where they wouldn't be expected. They would be expected coming in from the West and as they came in from the east uh, where this thing was located. Now, here's how God works and how this ship was sunk. It's amazing. It was in a fjord, heavily protected radar. They had a, an air base with uh, Messerschmitt 101 fighters and... Um, Measure, uh, I don't know, not 101. It was just the measure Schmitz. And what this it was the amazing thing God worked through two people to change the circumstances. Now, the bombers were carrying 
these earthquake bombs. I mean, massive two ton bombs. They could only take one bomb so huge, massive. And because of the distance, because of the payload, they didn't have guns. They were literally painting broomsticks and sticking them out the turrets in the hope that they could bluff a fighter if one showed up, because otherwise they were sitting ducks. And those crews knew it, that if the Germans could get you know, fighters uh, up in the air and go after them, that was it. They would all buy the farm. And what was happening is as they were coming in from the Russian side, there was a radar station that was monitoring this. And the officer in charge of this facility was not a, a happy Nazi. He didn't like what the Nazis were doing to the world. Uh, he, you know, he, he just didn't like it, didn't want to be a part of it. And he knew that the British wanted this ship so bad, and he understood why. And so what he did was, this was marginal moments of allowance. This is how God works. What he did was, and I think, you know, like God whispered in his ear, wait, wait. And what this guy did was, he could have, the, the, the minute that the British bomber showed up on his radar, he could have sounded the alert, and that would have been it for the bombers. He didn't. He bided his time until the very last moment, that if he didn't do it by that moment, then he would definitely wind up in front of a firing squad. He had to have an excuse for, for messing up. And so he was late in giving the information. Then there was a second part of it. Here's where God really put the hurt on the Nazis. And it was the air traffic controller in the, you know, at the airport. And it, the airport had one taxiway and it had one runway, and that was it. And they had a full squadron of Messerschmitt fighters, which were parked off of that. And what he did was, there was a cargo plane, you know, those three-engine planes that the Nazis used. And it was coming in, and they're slow airplanes, really slow airplanes. Now, if that air traffic controller was a, was a good Nazi, he would have immediately told the cargo airplane, uh, just circle until we launch our fighters. He didn't. He reversed the order. He made the fighters sit on the ground, idling, while they were waiting for this Junker Ju-52, low and slow, to come in and finally land. So, <clears throat> between an, an officer, a radar officer, and an air traffic controller, they bought as much delay time as was possible, and it was enough. When the Lancasters came over the ship, they dropped all their bombs, and the ships capsized and sank. It was a huge, massive loss for the Nazis, huge loss. And... By the time the Messerschmitt, the 109, uh, Messerschmitt 109s got there, they literally were three minutes behind the bombers. And the bombers right now, because they had dropped their loads, man, it was pedal to the metal. You know, they floored it and they were getting out of there as fast as they could. And so the fighters knew that there was no way they could catch up with the bombers and shoot them down and then have enough fuel to get back. And so they'd all drown to death for after doing that. So they just turned around and went back to the base. Well, that's how God works. So these Nazis had this massive ship, 
They have all these guns. They have all these fighters. They have all of this and all of that. And God whispered in two ears and just said, wait, wait. And that ship was doomed and it was over for that ship. And it would have been a terrible. If that ship had gotten out. Oh my gosh, it would have just been, it would have wreaked havoc. By the way, Marco, so, some people say that not uh, that Germany didn't actually lose the war. What do you make of uh, that? Well, what they're saying is that there was uh, they didn't necessarily lose the war. They just infiltrated. You know, they had Operation Paperclip, right? And I mean, and they did help us get to the moon, allegedly. Yeah, they, you know, and then people are saying we didn't go to the moon yeah. either. <laughs> So, <laughs> you don't know, I don't know what in the hell we've done anymore, do you? I mean, it's like, I think it's better to just wait for somebody to have a fantasy football team moment. You know? Right. <laughs> because everything else for us is screwy and uh, has been for a long time. But this is, this is the way it goes. It's yes. uh, creator is... Creator's hand is in this. And, you know, the amazing thing, and I'm watching how people are waking up in awareness. I mean, after this shooting with Trump, if that had happened 10 years ago, we would still be talking about stupid stuff. Most likely, yeah. And we're not talking at all. By the way, Marshall, there is some breaking news. I just got it on my cell phone here. An officer fatally shoots person in Milwaukee outside of the RNC perimeter, uh, source says. So um, there's already another another shooting just two days after the assassination attempt. Yeah, this is this is I mean, let's, is this going to be the new normal? Well, I hope it doesn't become normal, but you got a good point there. They're desperate. It seems They're like that, desperate, yes. desperate, and they don't care if people know what they're doing and figuring it out, because that's what's happening. I mean, people, all of these digital warriors, when after this shooting incident on MSNBC, they're going, uh, Trump left the stage because of popping sounds. Oh, yes, it's my like, God. All right, yeah, you know. I don't and, know where the mentality is with a lot of these people, by the way, Marshall. You know, even my co-host um, said some things that I even found kind of disturbing. And he's pretty much echoing some of the statements I've heard out there in terms of, uh, even though he's very pro-Trump, but I'm, I'm along the lines of not wanting to, I, I don't want to see any, president or potential president getting shot at and i'm not someone that wishes any any of these people harm um and, and some people on social media very bloodthirsty wanting trump to actually have been shot and again if it was biden i wouldn't be doing a victory lap and being happy about that sort of thing because that makes you no better than the shooter you know it just was the way that the left you know oh Oh, damn, they missed it. Yeah, they, I didn't like that. Been, you know, it's like, oh, these people are sick. They need Jesus, I believe. And, yeah, I mean, it's, um, but all of this is, and I follow this and I stay on top of it for one big reason. Yeah. How do people survive Planet X? Right. That is the big bada bing for me. How do the people survive the Planet X flyby? If the cabal, the globalists, their plan has always been the same. You know, go back, you have IRAS uh, in 1983. Was That was the first time they were actually able to image Nemesis. And they used that satellite to create an ephemera. So in other words, they could track where was it going to go. And that was a cover-up. Uh, a lot of the Europeans who were part of that project were really pissed off because they were, NASA cut them out and took over control. And they said that IRAS 
had a failure of its image camera cooling system. It was an infrared camera, and it's it's a curious thing, but it's true, is that in order to do infrared imaging in space, the camera had to be colder than space. And space is pretty cold. And very so, cold, yeah. Very, very cold. And so they had to have this ability to uh, keep that camera at the right temperature. Well, what NASA did was they told everybody, oh, darn, the cooling system in the camera doesn't work. So uh, we can control the satellite, but we can't take any images. Right. Well, the Europeans, especially the Dutch and the Italians, well, they were pissed. <laughs> and because uh, they could see the data was coming in like it was still flooding in. But NASA had changed the encryption code, so they couldn't bring it down. Mm. And NASA just said, oh, ignore it. It's just rebroadcasting the same junk it had, you know, whatever. There. Well, you know how NASA is. A, a gazillion dollar satellite fails just at the right moment because somebody forgot to convert metric to standard, right? Right. <laughs> Things of that yeah. nature. And of course, you know, they're very infamous for also turning off live feeds when there's an uh, unknown object uh, around the uh, dish there. Yeah, this is what they do. Well, what actually happened, and I was, um, you know, this is going to be in one of my FAQs, uh -huh. and I'm going to be talking about this more. I'm mm -hmm. going to have a complete one on IRAS and also Ulysses and um, uh, a couple of, uh, you know, I'm getting into the astronomical assets that they're using. But what they did was they pretended that it was done, but what they were actually doing was they were using up the last of the hydrazine navigation fuel on board the IRAS upon the probe and they were using it to make general gentle corrections because once they had nemesis they wanted to follow it along because you have to track it this is how you get that ephemeris and ephemeris is think of it like uh, you go to the train station and they have a schedule and the train's going to be here then it's going to be there then it's going to be at that station and those are the times that it's supposed to arrive assuming it's not amtrak and amtrak it just gets there eventually yes uh so you have that's that's an ephemera ephemeris it's uh tracking that and they used up the last of the hydrazine fuel on that spacecraft to keep it going until finally it ran out of fuel. They couldn't control it anymore. And that was it. It was shut down and that was the end of IRAS. But they had uh, just a wealth, a wealth of information. And uh, and so I'm tracking all of these are the things that I'm doing in this FAQ series that I want to make sure that they can't bury it. That's what I want to do. I just want to make sure they can't bury it because I, I see them already burying. I'm seeing stuff that I was, you know, I was looking at many years ago. And, uh, you know, that's it. It's been sponged or what they like to do is go in and they'll take it and make the language completely incomprehensible. And so it makes you feel like, oh, I, I'm not smart enough to understand <laughs> what they're yes. saying. This is what they do. So with my Planet X FAQ, I just am putting it up there and it's on X and it's also on on X. I'm uh, your own world USA, and it's also up on the uh, Odyssey site. And Odyssey is a good place to put your videos. They're small, but your videos go into the block. They have a blockchain storage system. I really like that. So uh, I know that my videos will stay there, and also. 
interestingly, uh, there's uh, all of these search engine algorithms mm -hmm. that suppress everybody. Not so, on on Rumble. Oh my God! I remember on Rumble, I put up a series of videos. Worked so hard on them. Yeah, Rumble's even worse. A Rumble, yeah, and uh, they just they they came back and I did it was the the jab with Marshall Masters I think was the one I did. Yeah. And I put all of them up, and I was starting to get traffic immediately, and it was popping. It was really good. And then they said, hey, how about monetizing this? And I figured, okay, fine, I'll monetize. Right. Let's see how it goes. Wrong. The minute I chose to monetize it, yeah. Rumble, Rumble absolutely froze my traffic, stopped it, disappeared me completely. And if I hadn't monetized it on Rumble, they'd still be up. So... You know, I use Rumble a lot. I follow a lot of people on Rumble, but for Planet X, it's I guess, you know, the folks at Rumble just are, you know, let's we don't want to take a beating on this, so let's just go ahead and do what they say. Yeah, I'm a little suspicious of uh, the shows that generate a lot of views on Rumble. I feel like those aren't actually real. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that's kind of inflated sort of uh, padded stats they give you there. Yeah, I kind of feel like Rumble is a honeypot for YouTube refugees. Yes, I, I believe even Rumble might be a place of, that's created by the feds just to keep a tab on all, the, all those, uh, the, the quote-unquote radical people. Yeah, that's... Uh, they, they a want, honeypot. They want to continue tracking you and so it's um i got out of this say i mean with some people they can do it not um i still on x uh tiktok i think has been superb for finding uh observation videos and uh, that has helped out a lot but overall Oh, God, Michael, you know how bad it is. Oh, they yeah. do it to you, too. All the time. All the time. And, uh, you know, I'm really hoping this changes now that uh, after the election and that we're, you know, we're going to have people in there that are really going to fight for us. And I'm not talking about these rhino Republicans. Understood, and, yes. Uh, you know, they, they're throwing us under the bus like crazy. And so people say, Oh, why don't you register to be, you know, I'm an independent. I mean, the thought of registering to become a Democrat or a Republican, either party just makes me want to hurl. And, uh, there's, you know, that's the way it is, but we got to, we keep going. I am seeing things are moving in a good direction. I have been personally myself, uh, I spend a few hours every day on this, researching, I'm following, because again, whoever's going to prevail in this is going to determine who survives Planet X to a very large degree. That's right. And uh, Marshall, it, I'm going, Ma uh, Marshall I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, for those wondering, <laughs> when do you believe this will sort of come to fruition? The, uh, all right, what specifically the, the flyby well uh, right now <clears throat> we're looking at and i guess this is uh, kind of a we're in a interesting phase right now and i'm working with jp jones and i got the numbers for june and i'm going wow we really look like we're very close to perihelion perihelion is where Nemesis will be closest to the sun. Now, that's when it reaches its point of perihelion, it's not like all of a sudden it's everything's going to happen in one day. All right. Now, nah, it's not on a human time scale. The point of the per, perihelion is going to be a, a transit 
of a couple of months, I think. And we are, we're tracking it. We're, I think that by the time we have the July and the August numbers, we'll know for certain. But it looks like initially just what we're seeing on the initial stuff that's coming in right now. And we also took a mid-month snapshot to take a look at it. And we're evaluating that data. Um, the point of uh, perihelion that is important is it's not like something is going to happen that day that we reach perihelion. It's a point in the journey. And But after that, once it's through perihelion, you know, right now it's transitioning from what we call its perihelion to aphelion lake in its orbit. So one half of the orbit is going towards our sun. The other half is going away from it, and that's the aphelion phase. And so... When we are in the aphelion phase, this is when we're in the danger zone and things are going to start picking up and going. Now, um, Science Magazine just made an announcement and it really, uh, this is something I was reporting six months ago, that the Earth's core has been perturbed. Uh, and if you, uh, for your listeners out there, the FAQ that I do is number five. Now, if you're newbies and you don't know that much about it, start with number one. Um, and even if you know a lot about it, start with number one, because if you, you're going to pick up some stuff along the way that maybe you might have missed. But more importantly, if you've watched it and you know what is in that video, you can use that video to help you help others come into awareness. You can say, here, go look at these FAQs, and you could pick out one or two that are, you know, really meaningful for you. And this saves people the trouble of having to explain the same thing again and again and again. Uh, number five, really, I lay out the pole shift. And what we're having is, and this started in 1995, <clears throat> there is a, um, it's a force that is coming, an energetic force that is coming from Nemesis. And the interesting thing about this is this was originally predicted in 1940 by astronomer Carlos Ferrada, and he was absolutely right. So we have this, what I call a core lock, and our Earth's core is moving with it, and this is what is starting to cause all of the problems that we're having. So, <laughs> excuse me. No I, worries. I dry, dry throat. Yeah, drink some water there again. But yes, a, um, a pole shift, I mean, I couldn't even imagine that uh, actually occurring. The uh, disruption of the Earth's magnetic field uh, would be pretty tremendous on its output or on what it would do to us, basically. It's not going to be pleasant. <clears throat> not at all. Uh, the pole shift, every structure above ground is either going to be damaged or destroyed. Yeah. Uh, it'll vary. There are going to be it'll be spotty. Some areas are really going to get nailed and other areas not. If you're living near a coastline, dumb luck that. You're not yes. going to do well. And, um, but the pole shift is definitely going to happen because it's the last time we had a pole shift was Noah's flood. That was a pole shift event. And uh, you and, must have read my mind, uh, Marshall, because I was about to mention that to you in a moment here. Yeah, we do. You and I are. I know that's crazy. I, I, this I, way. I know. I was going to say, uh, is that what happened to Noah's Ark? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And as a matter of fact, you know, 
I'm working on my next batch of FAQs. Yeah. And I was looking at it and I started realizing that there is a global consciousness that there's a very few people that are involved in Planet X research, but no matter where they are in the world, they find each other. That's right. And they share with each other and they, and they infl you know, and uh, their work is influenced by these other people. It's really an amazing thing. It is, the more I come to see it, the more I realize that, you know, it is hand of God. And Creator wants us to do well in this. And, you know, I know there are people that are going, oh, you know, that's it. It's all over. You know, humanity's gone. We're, you know, and this. No, that's not, Creator doesn't want that. And that's not what Creator's going to let happen. Um, you know, but on the other hand, you're going to have to be intelligent enough to know what you're going to do with all of this. Because it is, for the people that are just, uh, and you see them like, I see them on my Telegram channel where we're posting all these videos that right. we're finding. Oh, my God, they're doing all the denial stuff of, oh, the finger test, you know. Well, the finger test was real popular. You know, that the problem for the deep state is there are two people left talking about Planet X that have been doing it for longer, and they're alive and been doing it for longer than anyone else alive today that you could talk to. Nancy Leader, who started her site, Zeta Talk, in 1995, which was the first year we started being perturbed by this anomalous energy coming from Nemesis. I remember uh, that, that, that publication, Zeta Talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so I came into it. We started uh, about mid-2001 researching Planet X. And... We initially weren't interested in Planet X when I started Yowza in 1999. Wasn't the least bit interested. But what we were trying to do was figure out the whole global warming thing, all right? And the reason why I was interested in doing that, in the 90s, I had a uh, travel business. I specialized in independent tours to the former states of the Soviet Union. I was in Russia a dozen times, right? you know, going out, doing it. And uh, it, was, it was an amazing thing for me. It was really cool. Um, the thing is, I was going over and I was flying Aeroflot and People don't know, Aleutian airliners are actually more comfortable than Boeing. <laughs> and I was flying, I, my favorite plane was the Aleutian 62, which they designed in the late 50s. It flies, you know, it's just super stout. The four engines are in the very back off of the empennage. And it's a quiet, comfortable airplane, really quiet and comfortable. I enjoyed it immensely. And I'll never forget going to Russia. It was at night and we had to have a stop in Alaska. And then we would go over the pole to Moscow. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, that was at night. But during the day, it was all during daylight on the return trips. Because the return trips were coming out in the morning. And... The first time I flew over the pole, and for those of you who are flat earthers, uh, oh, this is just going to piss you off so bad you can't take it. But I didn't see a flat earth, all right? I was seeing the curve of the earth from one side of the aircraft to the other. I could see because we were flying over the poles, all right? So there was nothing flat about it. And I remember one time I was interview. It was uh, on another show years ago, and a flat earther was saying, "Well, you know that 
they do something to the windows in the airliner. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so that it looks like it's curved instead of it being flat. And I said, okay, the airplane I flew in was designed in 1959. It was made in 1962. And it was made by the Soviets and Russia during the Cold War. Are you telling me the Russians were in on flat earth theory? And the guy hung up. Oh, he hung up. Oh, man. You know, and he just disappeared. But I was watching it, and the first time, that first time, oh, my God, I was mesmerized. Just mesmerized. It was so beautiful. Unbroken fields of snow and ice for as far as I could see in any direction. It was the first time I saw blue ice in my whole life. All right, which is just very, very old ice. And I mean, I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. If you wanted blue ice, you went to 7 Eleven. Yeah, exactly. And you, you know, you, you, that was the syrup <laughs> to put in the ice on the cone, right? That's right. And so that's how you had blue ice. And so I'm sitting there looking at this and it was just stunning. And winter after winter, because see, I always would go in the winter. I'd leave in December and come back in January because that was gave me a, a free hand to go work with my operators and set up my packages and my tours. And also, I, I like winter there a lot more than any other season. And uh, coming back year after year, I'm having that same flight looking at the curvature of the earth. And, you know, later on, I went from the Elysian 62 to the Elysian 76. And I was still seeing the curve of the earth. So I guess the Soviets were just hard asses about it. And they didn't want to play the game and modify their windows. So I kept seeing the curve of the earth. But what the other thing I kept seeing was a steady deterioration year after year. This is like a period of over eight flights. And finally, on the very last flight, what had once been this beautiful panorama of snow and ice, unbroken for as far as I could see, it was shattered, busted, dirty. It looked like an old windshield in a wrecked car in a junkyard. And so that was the reason why uh, I started working with a couple other folks in Mensa. And the three of us got together. We're the ones that really started Yowza. And we were originally saying, okay, they keep telling us global warming. It's not making sense. Because if you actually look at face value and you say, all right, let's take everything humanity is doing in terms of pollution and greenhouse gases and all that. You take everything that we're doing, scrunch it all together, it's about the equivalent of one good-sized volcano fart, all right? And I'm sitting there going, all of this stuff that they're feeding us, it's not, it's not connecting, it's not connecting. They're saying climate change, and I couldn't, that wasn't connecting for me because when you talk climate change, you're talking about thousands of years. And you're talking about weather weirding or bizarre weather. Yeah. You know, I mean, like they say in California, you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. That's right. And, you know, it'll change. You know, I have to say, I had, you know, my readers tell me about what they're doing, and I really appreciate it when they're giving me this yeah. information. But, my readers have the luxury of time to do something I can't do. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, you you're know. you're someone who's out there and uh, putting together work. You don't have uh, that much time to really look into anything else, really, at times. That's right. You got to stay in your lane. Yeah. And so uh, that is, you know, that has worked out for me. People that start the, get out of your lane, yeah, the, the, you know... That's not going to work out too well for you. Um, for me, over the years, and the reason why I've endured and I've kept a, a, a really wonderful audience, I've got so many uh, 
just lovely people. Great people that me. like you, yes. Yes, and I am so grateful for them. And <clears throat> I believe the reason why that they're following me is it's always something from the very beginning. I came as a professional news producer. And in the 80s, late 80s, I was a science feature producer for the cable news network. This is back when they were honest. All right. Now it's like, you know, it, if, if I'm walking through an airport, they have the CNN running continuously in, yeah. the, in the lounges. If I watch it, my hair will start on fire. <laughs> my feet will melt. You know, it's like, oh, I, I hate looking at it. But yeah, your body will go through a, a post of, shift. Pardon? I said your body goes through a post shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but uh, I've always taken a science approach to it. And right. in my work, it's for me, it's, you know, it's not about being right. It's about getting it right. That is the important thing. A lot of people want to, you know, be able to pound their chest. I got it right. I got it right. This, that, and the other thing. I'm not interested in doing that. What I'm interested in doing is getting it right, not being right. And so for me, integrity is really the most important thing. And if, if I were a shall we say more flexible about that uh you know money making opportunities abound just crank up the fear porn and that's the reason why they shut me down on youtube and other places because i won't do fear porn you have people that are talking about planet x and they're pumping the fear porn oh we're gonna die tomorrow we're gonna die tomorrow this that and, the other. and they're, they're going on and if you're pumping fear you know, you're driving the fear porn, you will get amazing traffic numbers. That's right. That's, they just want to get people scared. All right. Because the minute you're in a state of fear, your brain, your critical functions shut down. You you just turn into a stupid. And that's the reason why wokeism is so powerful, because people go into these really intense emotional states that are always fear-based. If you're in an emotional state that's love-based, that's a very different thing. But if it's fear-based, you're shutting down, your, the front of your brain just shuts down. You can't be a critical thinker anymore. So if you're sitting there and shutting down people's brains so they can't think critically, Oh my God, YouTube just absolutely is going to be in love with you. <laughs> you know, they're going to, you're going to be thinking, Oh my God, I must be the smartest person around because I'm getting all of this traffic. Right. You know where that traffic's coming from. That's it's right. Being driven at you. And if you, and as long as you keep pumping the fear, they'll keep pumping the traffic at you. Absolutely. Yeah. That's just the way it goes. But, and it, it's been a long, lean decade. You know, I would have to say that from 2013 on is when they really started smashing me hard. Uh, because in 2013 is when I started reporting that I was observing Nibiru from a live webcam feed from Turialba Volcano in Costa Rica. And I had a team of people and we made hundreds of recordings. We, it was just amazing. And uh, it would, Nibiru was, uh, Nemesis was below the ecliptic. We couldn't see it, but Nibiru is its outermost planet. It was popping up to where we could see it. And we were seeing it from this volcano at a height of about 11,000 feet above sea level. Uh, we were seeing Nibiru, which is the the third planet from Nemesis, and it is what we call the planet of crossing. Uh, this is the home world of the Anunnaki. And so the State Department actually 
intervened and they intentionally brought us to a screeching halt. There was a, uh, <clears throat> the volcano had a venting event and it wouldn't have hurt the camera because the camera's in a very good shielded thing, um, uh, housing. And so some ash or dust on it or whatever wouldn't have affected it. But the United States State Department went in and replaced this wonderful high definition camera with something that looked like probably it was from the original Lincoln Douglas debate. <laughs> you know? oh my. Or maybe, you know, <laughs> uh, Kennedy and Nixon. And uh, so that was when Nixon found out he, he didn't have star quality. <laughs> but <clears throat> the. The thing is that we couldn't we couldn't continue our work because not only did they put up this crappy, crappy camera, I'm talking about, remember when we first started getting images on our cell phones, like when we were in generation three, remember? Yes, very small pixelated photos. Yeah, yeah that kind of. So they, oh, it was yeah. a gen three camera. And then not only on top of that, the, the State Department made them point it at the dirt. And then on top of that, they made them put a, uh, uh, a, a, a piece of uh, fabric or something over the front of it to even make the image even less workable. And so by the time they were finished with it, and it was useless for observing Nibiru. And I'll never forget because they made the university there in Costa Rica put up a thank you letter for the donation of this wonderful piece of crap. <laughs> and uh, this is, you know, this is the way it goes, but we were tracking it. So I have seen, you know, people keep asking me, yeah. what am I going to see? What am I going to see? Well, I said, I, I keep telling them I've the first time I saw it was December 26, 2012 was the day after Christmas. And that was the first time I saw Nibiru live, real, the real thing. And um, and then, you know, after that, I put together a team. We started tracking it. And what we were lucky, and this is one of the things I explain in my FAQ videos, is that by the time the government figured out what we were doing, we already had enough observations that we could create a working model of the orbit. And so, and I'm talking about literally within days. If they had clicked us a, a couple of weeks or a month earlier, that's it, nothing. We'd have been dead in the water. Wow. So again, hand to God, you know what I mean? And so I see the I see the work of Creator in all of this, and God works in subtleties. You don't need to, you know. You could have an amazing, massive machine cost millions of dollars and whatever, and all somebody has to do is push the wrong button in the wrong order, and it's smashed to pieces. So God lets evil go build their little schemes, and then there's always this one little thing you know that if god whispers in somebody's ear and it goes that way it's game over for the bad guys and look what happened with trump if trump hadn't turned if he hadn't turned before the guy shot it it would have blown off the black back of his head period right All right yeah. bullet it would have just gone through. If he'd have survived that, he would have been a basket case. Yeah, right. I don't think there's. I don't think there's much chance to survive if you got hit in the back of the head, though. So yeah, I think he would have been just dead. Yeah, I I, I think that would have been it. And yeah. then, of course, at that point, you know, a lot the Europeans were saying, and also there's in America, people are saying is like, wow, we were like millimeters away from a civil war. And because if Trump had been murdered in that day, especially in front of his crowd, um, I think, you know, 
people wouldn't have responded all that well to Probably that. not, no. And so it's going, and I see things happening that give me hope for the future. I'm following the events in this battle of good versus evil. I'm following it in battle zones. And so uh, there's we have the political zone, we have these uh, there's other zones. The one from that is the most useful is lawfare because that's the only one that we have that's the closest thing we have to transparency. Everything else is, you know, uh, you don't know what you're looking at. And, but with this, and of course with lawfare, it's in the background. I'm looking at what the Supreme Court is doing. And the Supreme Court has reversed Roe v. Wade, and it's now back with the states. All right. And uh, this is really, you know, um, this is a good thing. Now, I would just say to people who are angry about it, uh, if a woman has a right to decide 